problem number 45 from the list. This is y double prime plus 4y is equal to okay, 0 if t is between 5 and 0. It is t minus 5 divided by 5 if t is greater than 5 but less than 10. And then it is 1 for all t that are greater than or equal to 10. I also know that u or y of 0 is 0 and y prime of 0 is 0 as well. Hopefully that will be helpful. So this right hand side is just screaming Laplace. And another way to do it is to break it up into three subdomains and treat three different um, problems with undetermined coefficients and then splice together the solutions at the boundaries. Namely, if this is, these are the initial conditions, that's for the problem on the first time domain, which is a simple harmonic oscillator with zero external force. And then at five seconds, that's going to attain some sort of value. And those values, the velocity and displacement at time t equal 5, must then be handed off to this, so the problem at 5 seconds to 10 seconds. And that's going to be a whole homogeneous solution, which is uh, harmonic oscillation plus the effect of this forcing function, right? So it gets kind of messy. Well, this is really something that's useful um, or easier to do with. I don't know if easier. The symbols are a little bit nicer to deal with with um, Laplace transform. So the idea first is that I'm going to take u5t and multiply by t minus 5 over 5. That means that this linear function will be switched on at 5 seconds. I will then switch this off by using a negative sign, but I'll switch it off at 10 seconds. And this is t minus 5 over 5. All right, so that t minus 5 over 5 should only live between um, 5 and 10 seconds. And then at 10 seconds, I will turn on just the number 1 given by this step function. And I'll just let that go on for the rest of the time. So I won't subtract off anything right here. So I'm going to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. OK, I don't have a table in front of me, so this is going to get a little dicey as I call out what I think the numbers are. But the Laplace transform of the second derivative, I think, is table entry number 2. It's s squared minus s times the first initial condition minus the y prime initial condition. And I will add that to 4 times the Laplace transform of s, which we just write as a little capital Y of s, right? Then on the right-hand side, I take the Laplace transform of u5 t times t minus 5 over 5 minus u10 t times t minus 5 over 5 plus u10 t. I don't even know why I'm writing this down. Okay, this is just silly. Anyhow, I'm going to take the Laplace transform of u10 first. I think that's table entry number 19. It's on your right-hand side. Down low, it's e to the negative time delay s over s. Right now, these two transforms are going to call for the use of um, table entry number 5, I think. Well, actually, it's the alternate form of 5. It's down below, which says, take the Laplace transform of the step times the other stuff. I will identify the time delay. So this is e to the negative 5s, which speaks of the time delay. And then I will take the Laplace transform of the stuff which is t minus 5 over 5. I will take the Laplace transform of t plus 5, that time delay, minus 5 over 5. Right, and then I will subtract from that the Laplace transform of this stuff. Now the time delay is 10, so this is going to be e to the negative 10s times the Laplace transform of t plus 10 minus 5. So I shift everything forward the time delayed amount. Right, so I switch all those time variables, and then I get e to the negative 10s over s plus e to the negative 5s. That's t plus 5 minus 5, so that's just t over 5. I take the Laplace transform of that, and I get 1 fifth times 1 over s squared. All right, I now subtract from that e to the negative 10s. That's 10 plus 5 minus 5, so that's 10, or t plus 5 minus 5, so that's t plus 5. So I take the Laplace transform of t over 5 to get 1 fifth times 1 over s squared. And then I, I add to that um, 
kind of a problem with just two, right? So I take the Laplace transform of two to get two over s. Okay. So at this point, I need to do some partial fraction decompositions. Right? What partial fraction decompositions am I seeing? No, I don't have to do that quite yet because I haven't solved for capital Y of S. Solving for capital Y of S, I get um, all of this stuff divided by the characteristic equation that I have up here. What characteristic equation is that? Well, this y of 0 is 0, this y prime of 0 is 0, and so all of this reduces into capital Y of S times S squared plus 4. Okay, so capital Y of S, I solve for that, and I get a fun mixture of stuff. Okay, I'm going to do some work over here instead, right? I'm going to try to clean this up a bit. When I solve for capital Y of S, I'm going to take the whole equation and divide through by S squared plus 4. That means each of these terms right here will have an S squared plus 4 in the denominator. Once I've done that, I'm thinking about table entry number 5. And in table entry number 5, they talk about these time delays, right? Time delays are seen on the Laplace side with these exponential multipliers. Everything else that they multiply is the function which is time delayed. So that means that I'm going to have each of these exponentials are going to be divided through by s squared plus 4. Now when I divide through by s squared plus 4, it will pick up an s from this term. Another s squared plus 4 will pick up an s squared from this term. And notice the same things are happening over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evoke partial fractions to split this s squared plus 4 off of this s. Part of me wonders whether convolution is better at this point, but I don't think anyone really wants to find that out right now, so... So, I'm going to do 1 over um, s times s squared plus 4. That's going to be a over s plus b s plus c over s squared plus 4. And so when I multiply everything together, I get the equation 1 is equal to a times s squared plus 4 plus b s squared plus c s. Okay, what do I notice immediately from this? There's only one constant term on the right-hand side, and that's a times 4, and so that should be equal to 1. So a is equal to 1 fourth. I also notice that a s squared plus b s squared is equal to no s squareds on the right-hand side, and so um, a must be equal to negative b, so b is equal to negative 1 fourth. And then there's no s term on the left-hand side here, so it has to be this s um, is equal to 0 s on the left, so c is equal to 0. Okay, so I know the partial fraction decomposition associated with when an s gets multiplied on a s, or on s squared plus 4. I have one more to do, which is 1 over s squared times s squared plus 4. So that should be a over s plus b over s squared plus c s plus d over s squared plus 4. When you find a common denominator for all this stuff right here, you're going to get an s times an s squared times an s squared plus 4. What you'll notice is that s times s squared, that's going to be s cubed, right? And when I have that s cubed, that is going to be... Um, not the s squared that's over here. So when I multiply everything into the numerator, right, I'm going to have an extra s squared or an extra s in the denominator, which I'm going to go through and strike out all over um, the numerator. So what I find from this is I get the equation 1 is equal to um, a s times s squared plus 4 plus um, b times s squared plus 4 quantity plus cs cubed plus d 
S squared. Or I hope. Okay. If that's the case, and I certainly hope it is, because I skipped some steps in there, I find out that this A is equal to negative C. I also find that B is equal to 1 fourth, because it's the only um, constant term in the whole equation. So B is equal to negative 1 fourth. Oh, no, positive 1 fourth. Excuse me. Okay, what else can I find out? I also see B and S squared here. Those are the only two. So B is equal to negative D. So D is equal to negative 1 fourth. This is kind of nice. A times S times 4. That's the only S term that I see. There's no S terms on the left, so the A term is gone. So the C term is gone. So I just have B and D. That's not too bad. Okay, so I now have a partial fraction decomposition for um, the occurrences where s squared gets hit by s squared plus 4 quantity, and when s gets hit by that as well. So if that's the case, I'm going to look at this first term here, and I have e to the negative 10s times, um, this is a situation where the s hits the 1 over s squared plus 4, the s squared plus 4 is appearing in the denominator multiplied by this s, that's this partial fraction. So I get a 1 fourth times 1 over s, then I get a negative 1 fourth times 1 over s squared plus 4. No, I have an s over s squared plus 4, excuse me. And then the c is 0, so that's this one. And then I have um, added to this this situation where I have a 1 fifth out front and e to the negative 5s. And then this multiplies. Um, a multiplier here where the s squared plus 4 gets hit with an s squared. That's this one right here, right? The second of the two partial fraction decomps. There's no a. b is 1 fourth, so I get 1 fourth, 1 over s squared. Um, and then d is equal to negative 1 fourth, and c is equal to 0, so I get a negative 1 fourth, 1 over s squared plus 4. <laughs> Minus, um, let's see, they both share, um, no, they don't, so I get an e to the negative 10s times, this is going to be my s squared situation, so it's really, ah, it's going to be this. Alright, so let me just call this stuff right here equation star. So that's going to be equation one-fifth star. Alright, and then I have a 2 over s, but this is, I don't know, I guess I should use colors here, not stars too. So I'm going to call this one red 1, and so this is 1 fifth times red, Roman numeral 1, I'll call this Roman numeral 2, and so this is um, plus 2 times Roman numeral 2, right, because this is a 1 over s term hitting this s squared plus 4, that's exactly what's going to happen here, so this is Roman numeral 2. So now I'm ready for inverse transform. When I do inverse transform here, I'm going to get y of t is equal to e to the negative 10s times 1 fourth times 1 over s. If you look at, I think, table entry number 18, the table entry associated with the Rapace transform of a pure step function, I get 1 fourth e to the nt. Okay. Now, I have this piece, e to the negative 10s, times this negative 1 fourth s over s squared plus 4. I look at table entry number 5. I recognize that s over s squared plus 4 is a cosine function by, I think, table entry 13 or 14. 
I'm a 13. So I get a 1, 4, U, 10, T. This transforms to a cosine function. It's a cosine of 2T, but I don't want 2T. I want 2T minus 10, 20. Because of the time delay, this cosine function, which is speak being spoken of here, is being offset 10 seconds. Now I have plus 1 fifth times 1 fourth, so that's 1 twentieth, I suppose. e to the negative 5s over s squared. That e to the negative 5s is telling me about a u sub 5t. Right? And the 1 over s squared transforms back to like a t term. So I don't have t here, I have t minus 5, right? This t term is being time delayed because of that step. Here, okay, here, this is a sine function, right? But this is not the right sine function. I need a 2 in the numerator, so I'm going to put a 2 in the denominator as well. So that's all 1 8 times a 5. So this is minus 1. 8 times 5 is 45, and I have u 5t because of this exponential. And then this one right here, that's going to be a sine function. So I don't want sine of 2t. I want sine of 2t minus 5. Okay, and now I'm going to subtract off. I'm going to subtract off. I'm moving all the way down here to the lower right to maybe sneak in the rest. Now this is e to the negative 10s, right? This is 1 fifth times this number 1 stuff. So actually that number 1 stuff transformed into all of, all of this. And then this is 2 times um, number 2 which transformed into into all of this. All right, and so some amount of this stuff is going to be checking out in 10 seconds. And what is it going to look like? It's going to look like u 10 t times 1 fifth times all this purple stuff. No, 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 all of this blue stuff. Only the time delay here is going to be at 10 seconds. So this is going to be at t minus 10. Over a 4. Because of that 1 fourth. It's not being seen. It's inside here. And then I'm going to have minus a another one-fourth, and then that's going to be a sine to quantity t minus 10. And then I'm going to add to this two times the remaining stuff. And that remaining stuff is going to be um, everything over here from number two. So that's going to be a 1 fourth u 10 t minus 1 fourth u 10 t times cos 2 quantity t minus 10. So that's just a direct port. of a thing is the solution.